All right, we're back and we're talking about residential real estate, lead-based paint. You guys should emblazon upon your forehead the date 1978. Any house built prior to 1978 must, under federal law, have this lead-based paint form accompany it through the transaction or the conveyance process. All right? So the question is, do we still make lead-based paint? The answer is yes, we do. We just don't use it in residential application. China uses it on toys because we still get them. Lead makes the paint dry and makes the color last longer. So like sometimes machinery, I've seen water towers, bridges, although they're trying to go away from all of it. Uh, also, that's why we got rid of you youngsters. Had We had, used to have leaded gas. Same reason. Lead-based paint affects all humans exactly the same. Doesn't matter. But where it affects the humans in the central nervous system, the brain stem, the growth platelets on the bones are all developed and formed in adults. That's why we have more issues with children. While it affects all humans the same, children are the one we're more interested in because all of those three areas are still growing and still forming. You don't want them exposed. All right? So lead-based paint. Now, there is a form that you must have, and up until now, we have looked at forms and went, woo -hoo! Who cares? Here's one I want to look at. So I want you to go to page 406 and understand this form because this is a form that is required. It is so important that if they will stop the closing and say, hey, can't close, no lead-based paint form, all right? So let's go through this lead-based paint form and talk about it real quick. On page 406 is the federal form. This form has to be given from the seller to the buyer, all right? And it's given prior to the buyer making an offer. Matter of fact, in our purchase agreement, we have to say that we have received this uh, lead-based paint form or have not. And also the seller's disclosure, which we will get to in the next unit, because we have to have both of these to be truly an informed buyer making a decision. Oh, but you go ahead and listen to it. We don't need to. <laughs> so if you'll notice on section A, you got one and two, seller's disclosure. Here's where the seller is disclosing his one of two choices. Notice A2 says we have records of lead-based paint. A1 says we have no records to indicate there are lead-based paint. Notice what it doesn't say it doesn't say there is no lead-based paint. That's not an option. It's not like you're innocent when you go to court. You're either guilty or you're not guilty. We couldn't prove it. Here, these say we have records or we have no records of the lead-based paint. It doesn't say there is no lead-based paint. That's not an option. <coughs> okay? So the seller discloses to the buyer uh, no lead-based paint, one, seller has no knowledge, Number two. Then letter B, it talks about the records. We have records or we have no records. So traditionally what you think or would hope is they're going to check A2, B2. We have no knowledge of lead-based paint and we have no records of lead-based paint. The old adage about ignorance is no excuse of the law, this is one case where it actually is. There is no law that says you are required to know. This is what proves it. But I have no knowledge, and I have no records. Well, we want to know. Too bad, not me. I don't have to do that as the seller. I am not required to know. I can be ignorant. But you'll see there's a second step to that here in just a second. So the seller declares his knowledge and his records. 
then it talks about what the buyer has to receive to make sure that that's true. You got C, D, and E. C says the buyer has received copies of all of the records. Now, it's very important you understand this. Even if they have no records, this form is a record. So they still have to get this form. Failure to get this form will stop a closing. So when they say the buyer's gotten all records, it may be that this is the only record they get because this record is marked as we have no records. But it is one of the records, okay? B says that the buyer has been given a pamphlet on lead-based paint in the family or whatever it's called. So the buyer must be aware of what lead-based paint can do to the family, and it's somebody's job to give their buyer client, i.e. you, this pamphlet. Now, the good thing is this pamphlet, you can actually go to epa.gov and check around and play with it and download the 12-page PDF and print it out and hand it to them. Same with this form. So there's really no cost to these, virtually, I would say. Okay? What most agents have done in today's technology is they have saved that as a PDF to your computer, and then you attach these records to the listing. So when you're working with a buyer, and I see John's listing or Matt's listing or anything like that, under attachments, I can look, and he's already uploaded the pre-filled out PDF and the document for me, and I just print them off, or just directly save them and email them to my client to look at. All right? So no longer do we even have to print this 12 page off multiple times. Now you just save it to your computer as a PDF, attach it to an email and send it to your client and say, hey, here's this buyer's, you need, you need this, all right? And then you'll notice that E has two options. And I told you that ignorance was no excuse of the law. I don't have to know. But the buyer still has the right to find out. So the buyer can elect to have a 10-day window to open up or uh, assess the paint themselves at their cost. Or they can waive that right. All right? So the seller is going to put A2, I have no record, no knowledge, B2, I have no records. It's going to give them this form. The buyer's going to say, I need to know. I've got three children under the age of eight. I want to know. I have a 10-day window of opportunity for me to hire someone to go in and check your house for lead-based paint. All right? And typically when a buyer has inspections and they mark all these different inspections, if they want this one, they'll say, yeah, we're, we're going to have this inspection done too. All right? Now, the fun part is letter F. Letter F says, the agent has informed the seller. You guys will actually go on the hook right here. This is where you will initial that you have, in fact, as the buyer's agent, done your job and told them, hey, Mr. Seller, we need the lead-based paint form. Hey, Mr. Buyer, my client, here's the lead-based paint form. It says they have no records. Here's the booklet that tells you what can happen. Do you want to waive your right, or do you want to have it inspected? Because we'll need to mark this. All right? And then you initial that you did your job the right way. Okay? Does this always happen now for houses that were built before 1978? They were in the 20s or so, and they were gutted, and they were taken down to the studs? And the question is, you can never remediate far enough. All right? If you gutted the house completely, took all the drywall out, did all that, and you did not get a new certificate of occupancy, still shows that as a house built in the 20s, you will still get this lead-based paint form, all right? Now, there is no way to prove that you did not get that there is no lead-based paint. You have to do it that way. Uh, so it's that was based under the Lead-Based Paint Hazard Reduction Act. 
Now, how they check the lead is two different ways. I actually was uh, the director for a company called the American Lead Lab Association, which has now become American Lead or American Lab Services here in Indianapolis. When I got out of the corporate world, I went into real estate. My wife panicked for about six months, and I took a job as the director of an environmental lab. All right, and we used to do this. Do you know Michael Sims, Southside guy? We'll talk about Michael Sims there in a minute. <clears throat> You can take a paint chip in, they can use a gas chromatograph and flame it, and it'll tell you if there's a lead molecule in there. So we can tell if the paint is lead-based paint, all right? And you know, I told you it affects all people. Remember in the movie Tommy Boy, when Rob Lowe asked him, he goes, did you eat a lot of lead when, paint when you were a kid? That's what they're referring, because the brain stem, the central nervous system, the growth platelets, all of that. So you can actually have it tested through a lead lab or a lab. The other way is this thing called the risk assessment method, which is basically like worst case scenario. House was built before 1978. It's been vacant for 10 years. All the paint in the living room's chipping. Let's go ahead and treat it like it's lead-based paint. The answer for lead-based paint is exactly the same as it is for asbestos encapsulation. Don't scrape it. <laughs> if you scrape it, all that waste you created, all those paint chips, are now hazardous waste that you have to take to a special landfill at like $500 a barrel. Well, I was saying they'll get rid of it, but they have to go get a scrape it off and bag it. Well, that's one way, but now the preferred method's encapsulation. Just paint over it. Just paint over it. Now, there's some... They don't like window sills being painted because of the movement and all that, but painting encapsulation for lead-based paint is the solution. You just paint right over it. What they're trying to get is all that. Children have what they call the hand-to-mouth trail. They stand with their hands in the window sill and they put them in their mouth. That's how the lead typically gets induced. Lead's one of the few uh, chemicals in the world you can inhale it, you can ingest it, it can be direct, injected directly and it all has the same effect no matter how you absorb it. Some chemicals you can't do that. Lead, you can actually get all of them. So if you heat it, like you're scraping it, so you got your hair dryer heating it up to scrape it off, now you're just inhaling it, all right? So, well, it can be absorbed through the skin, yes. Ingestion and inhalation are the two most common for this scenario. Typically ingestion. Like I said, kids eat hand to mouth, touch the windowsill and play in the dirt and all that. So encapsulation is the answer. You can do the paint scrape method, but it becomes very, very expensive. Even after you do that, it's still, you still are not allowed to say there is no lead-based paint. You still have to do it. All right, let's change the audio file. We're whizzing along on this slide, aren't we? I love how they got like nine bullet points, and each bullet point's like an hour's length. But still the same slide. <laughs> 